Okay, we are on recording. Let's go Thank on. you. <laughs> Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, hello to everyone. My name is Margarita Krisaki, and today we'll monitor the third session on education training uh, in the space sector, new trends, partnerships and opportunities. The main objective of this info session is to introduce to you uh, the university uh, community, education training community of, uh, of Nereus, and also identify areas of uh, cooperation uh, between our universities, our community, and uh, other key educational uh, stakeholders. Before I invite uh, our speakers for today, I would like to present shortly our network. We have uh, uh, new participants I see in the in the webinar, um, so I think it's uh, it's crucial to to give a, a short introduction on on what we represent. So let me share with you shortly uh, my my presentation. And then we jump into the discussion. Okay. Let me see if you can, uh, I guess you can see the presentation. So I'm, I'm, I'm showing this to you now. Okay. Um, Nereus is a space organization uh, which explores the benefits of space technologies for European regions and their citizens. And uh, as a network, we also we mainly promote the use of space and its applications. We address this mission through our main uh, pillars of activities. The, these are three, as you can see, advocacy, political dialogue, interregional collaboration, technological trends, uh, public outreach. We are a network of 23 European regions uh, and uh, 33 associate members, including uh, universities, research centers, companies, SMEs, uh, and space agencies. Uh, as you can see, our uh, education, tra education training is key for, uh, for us, and it's reflected in our community. Um, we have universities within our network uh, and, and research centers, but also outside uh, our network uh, in other regions. Uh, and in addition to this, we are uh, very active with, um, in, uh, the, in the development of a uh, memorandum of understandings and partnerships with uh, key educational um, uh, associations and stakeholders, such as Euravia, which is the European Association of, of Aerospace Students. And today they, they are joining us. Uh, now, regions. Uh, regions are the key users and procurers of space-based applications, products, and services. Uh, the transfer, as you see, from the satellite imagery to useful information offer a wealth of benefits for public, uh, for, for the citizens, and also for public authorities, including job opportunities and growth at local and regional levels. But uh, for this, they will need a well-equipped workforce. Uh, trained people, trained people to support this process uh, with the right skills and uh, to enhance, to support this development uh, at the regional level. For this reason, and given our big education training community, we are involved in different activities. Uh, as you can see, the first one is it's through projects. Uh, our main, uh, uh, the, let's say, the flagship project that we have um, that we have been active in the last years, it's the Erasmus Plus EU training uh, project EO4GEO. Uh, EO4GEO brings together experts from academia uh, and the public and, pri and private sectors to define innovative solutions for education training in the Earth observation sector. Uh, today we have a, we have the coordinator of this project. So I will not say any more, uh, more, uh, more about that. Uh, what I would like to underline is that the project ended in summer and now it continues as an alliance. Uh, an alliance that brings opportunity to universities and uh, other uh, key associations. Nereus during the project was responsible for the regional rollout. So to identify what are the needs for education training at regional level. And for that, we organized um, five uh, workshops. Of course, we are also we are partnering with other um, consortium, education training consortium. Universe is one of them. 
Um, it's uh, uh, the initiative is led by the University of Toulouse, which is located in, in one of our member regions, Occitanie, and Ereus is member of the advisory board. Uh, now we we are involved into projects to promote education training in uh, in the space sector, but we also mobilize uh, exhibitions. One of, we, I will refer very shortly to two of them. Uh, the first one is Space Girls, Space uh, Women. Um, in this exhibition, we showcased, um, we raised awareness about uh, STEM studies, especially for, for young girls and, and, and women. Uh, the exhibition ended in, uh, in 2020, and now we have the, our new exhibition, Space for Our Planet. Um, there we promote um, uh, the sustainable uh, use of space through uh, the through the use of space uh, technologies, uh, and uh, also we have um, 25 interviewees, including uh, young uh, young entrepreneurs, who really showcase uh, how space technologies can support the implementation of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. In conclusion, uh, I would like to highlight that we are also active uh, in other domains um, uh, and we support, we promote education training uh, in many different ways. These webinars, for example, uh, it's, our, it's one of our initiative to promote to our community uh, how important is, um, is education training capacity building skills uh, in the Earth observation sectors. Um, also, we, um, we implement um, annual visits to universities uh, to enhance collaboration uh, with them. Uh, and of course, we participate in, uh, in we are invited in uh, many different events, like the last one in, in December 2022. It's a new space economy forum, and there we participated in the roundtable on STEM education. Um, so, uh, as you can see, uh, we really support uh, uh, we really support this uh, this area, and um, we we are aware that we need a new a, a new generation to be aware of the importance of space and to be creative through the use uh, of space technologies. And there, universities play a key role there in the development of such a workforce. So I will stop sharing now and I will continue with our first speaker. Before that, I would like to remind you that you are, um, feel free to pose your questions in the chat. We constantly monitor that. Uh, and the webinar today will follow the similar format as of as the, with, the say, with the previous webinars meaning the, the speakers will present their education train ac activities and then we will have a debate and discussion with them uh, and we engage the audience in, in the discussion. Um, so I would like to move on now with uh, our first speaker, Professor Paolo Tortora from the University of, uh, of Bologna. Um, Bologna, uh, Bologna is located in Emilia Romana. Emilia Romana is uh, one of the member regions of, of Nereus. Um, Professor Tortora is, uh, in, in, is working in the Department of Industrial Engineering. He's also the head of the Planetary Exploration Laboratory, but not only that. Um, I would like to, to welcome him and uh, I give him the floor to, to better uh, introduce the activities of, uh, of his department and uh, laboratory. We see your presentation, Professor, so you can... Uh... Okay, thank you very much, Margarita. First of all, can you hear me correctly? Yes, yes. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, first of all, let me start apologizing for my voice. I had a very bad uh, cold in the last few days, so unfortunately, I still didn't uh, recover uh, completely. Uh, so I'm trying to do my best. Um, uh, also, let me start uh, just uh, by uh, thanking you and uh, Nereus for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here and to represent the University of Bologna in the context of this education and training uh, presentation. 
So my name is Paolo Tortora. I'm representing uh, uh, my university in this presentation because I'm also uh, formally the delegate within the NEUS of uh, University of Bologna. And uh, I'm starting with uh, a little bit of uh, history, uh, just presenting who we are. Um, you may already know that the University of Bologna is considered to be the oldest university in the Western world. Uh, it's considered to be uh, funded in 1088, so it has almost uh, one uh, uh, millennium of history, uh, almost, in uh, about uh, uh, 70 years uh, from now. And uh, of course, I'm not going to go through all the important steps uh, which are recalled in this chart here. But let me just recall that in the recent years, in the last, uh, I would say, 30 to 40 years, the University of Bologna has been driving uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, internationalization uh, process. In particular, uh, you may know that the system which is nowadays you know, used in Europe, which foresees that the three years bachelor degree and the two years master's degree was uh, uh, somehow approved in a very big meeting which was held in 1999 uh, which is now uh, known as the Bologna process. Uh, basically it uh, recalls a very big meeting which was held in Bologna with the presence of uh, something like 150 rectors uh, from universities uh, all over Europe and they approved to go through a unified uh, higher uh, education system in Europe. Now the anniversary of this, uh, the, the, the 20th anniversary of, of this uh, uh, event that took place just a few years ago in 2019. <clears throat> so uh, uh, let's see uh, where we are in the world, uh, just to, to make uh, our map a little bit more clear. Apart from different sites, we have uh, uh, spread in different continents, which are uh, somehow places of the University of Bologna where we have specific education and training courses. The main activities take place in our region, which is called Emilia Romagna, which, uh, as uh, Margarita uh, recalled, is also a full uh, partner of uh, Nereus. And uh, um, apart from uh, uh, the Bologna, the main city, which is located here, we have uh, four main campuses because the University of Bologna is uh, one of the few uh, in, in the world which implemented a real uh, multi-campus structure where different cities, apart from the main one, have uh, different uh, uh, vocational activities, which I will describe in a second. They are Ravenna, Forlì, Cesena and uh, Rivini. Um, these are the, the, the main vocations of the four um, campuses of, uh, uh, of the University of Bologna, apart from Bologna itself. As you see, they have uh, different uh, specializations. Uh, for Cesena, in particular, the ICT, agri-food and architecture and psychology. Uh, for Ravenna, it's very, it's very famous for uh, cultural heritage and uh, environmental and sea uh, rights. Uh, in Forlì, we have different specialization, and in particular, I wanted to highlight the uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering because here is where I work and where my office are. Uh, and uh, that's where the main activities and teams uh, and uh, topics related to Nereus uh, are actually uh, implemented. Um, let's take a look at the number of students. You see the University of Bologna has a very large number of uh, students, uh, almost 90,000. That, that's uh, uh, the, the, uh, the data coming from last academic year, 2021-2022. Uh, of course, we don't still have uh, the full data for this year. Uh, but the important factor is uh, almost 8% of the students are international. And that's uh, one of the largest number uh, we have in Italy and uh, uh, across Europe. Um, so this makes uh, the University of Bologna a real uh, multicultural environment because we have uh, a very large, a very uh, big act activity for international students coming uh, from all over the world. And uh, as you see, um, that's the number of uh, uh, students enrolled in the degree programs, uh, a little bit less than the total students, uh, and as you see, uh, the same uh, percentage of international students is also respected here. And that's uh, the uh, sharing of students per campus, of course, excluding Bologna. So in Forlì, the, the city where uh, most of the space activities are uh, developed, uh, we have almost uh, 7,000 students, which makes uh, the total of the campuses uh, uh, something like uh, 20,000 students. Uh, um, 
uh, the, the total of the campus apart from Bologna is by itself uh, similar to a, a, a small to medium uh, university in Italy. So uh, you can understand that handling such a large number of students is really a challenge for, for our management. Um, in terms of teaching, we have a very uh, wide uh, uh, number of uh, degree programs, uh, 243, but this year I already know they are now at the 256, uh, so they are increasing uh, year by year. And uh, almost uh, um, a hundred of them are international, and by international we mean that uh, they are either uh, taught in English or taught in English plus with a double or multiple degree with the other universities in the world, or just with double multiple degrees, but not taught in English. So that's a very large effort also in terms of uh, international vocation by the University of Bologna. And uh, not a surprise, uh, uh, the majority of uh, uh, the second, uh, the majority of the international, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, of the international programs are uh, within the, the second cycle uh, degree. Um, the, uh, I highlighted here also which are the courses, the degree programs, which are actually related to the activities of Nereus. We have two bachelor degree, uh, the one in aerospace engineering and the one in astronomy. We have two master's degree, both are international, so both are taught in English, in aerospace engineering and astrophysics as cosmology. We have two PhD courses, one in aerospace science and technology and one in astrophysics. And then we have uh, only three years ago uh, initiated a new second level master in uh, space mission science design and application. Uh, its acronym is uh, SPICES. Uh, and uh, the idea of this uh, second level master degree is to give a very interdisciplinary um, uh, teaching to our students, uh, making them uh, ready for the real uh, jobs uh, in the new uh, space economy uh, arena. In terms of research, uh, we have reshaped our internal organization on the pillars of the Horizon Europe. Uh, so you may, re you may recognize uh, how we flew down the organization of the six uh, clusters uh, from Horizon Europe, and you already recognize also that uh, digital industry and space, the cluster five is where most of the activities related to, um, mm -hmm. to uh, Nereus uh, are uh, developed. Um, uh, the University of Bologna is also very active uh, in, in terms of industrial relations. So we have uh, a very large number of active frameworks uh, with the major business and business associations. Um, we have seven joint labs uh, with uh, uh, um, companies uh, which are uh, developed within the universities. So they are spaces uh, for collaboration between the university and company. We have five advanced vocational training schools for employees uh, coming from companies. And lastly, we have uh, one competence center in the, national, in the context of the National Industry uh, Plan 4.0, which is called BREX. Um, uh, also, in terms of payment services, the University of Bologna is very active. Uh, we have uh, uh, more than 7,000 Italian and international companies registered uh, to get uh, you know, um, graduate students from our um, from our databases. And uh, last but not least, uh, we are very active also in uh, generating uh, spin off and startup. Here are the latest numbers. We have uh, uh, currently 37 uh, uh, accredited spin off and uh, uh, 12 active and credited startup uh, in business. Uh, of course, in order to do that, we have a very large number of business incubation and development centers, which are spread uh, around the uh, five cities, uh, the five campuses of the University of Bologna. Coming to the space research, this is organized uh, not only uh, vertically, I would say within our main seven departments, which have to do with space, uh, very quickly, uh, the Department of Industrial Engineering, the Department of Electrical, Electronic and Information uh, Engineering, the Department of Civil, Chemical and Environmental and Material Engineering, uh, Department of Computer Science, Physics and Astronomy, Department of Chemistry, and the Department of Biological, Geological and Environmental Sciences. So apart from these vertical structures, which of course take care not only of research, but also of educational activities, the University of Bologna decided a long time ago, almost 10 years ago, to um, generate and spin out uh, different uh, interdepartmental centers. One of them is related to industrial aerospace research, is called CIRI Aero, in brief, that's the acronym. And that's the, server, that's the center for which I'm currently serving as a, a director. 
Um, <clears throat> and uh, there is another one which is also involved in space activities, which is the uh, CHIRI ICT, where uh, um, uh, information and communication technology uh, activities are carried out. Uh, <clears throat> just to say a few words about uh, the teams and the competencies uh, within the CHIRI IRO, we have two main uh, um, operative units. One is most related to aeronautics, aerodynamic and propulsion, and you can see the subjects which are developed here. And the other one is the one more uh, relevant for Nereus, uh, is the one on space science and technology. And you see here most of the teams which are uh, related to the Nereus teams, so astrophysics and cosmology, astrobiology, Earth observation, microsats and space systems, a satellite ground station, and then planetary exploration and uh, scientific activities within the solar system. Here's a link where, uh, I mean, when you get the slides, you can get and see the different topics which are related to how we map the activities to the Horizon 2020 research topics and now also in terms of Horizon Europe uh, research uh, teams. Uh, a very uh, quick look at the competitive programs and the budget that, do, that we have raised in the last few years. Uh, I have to say proudly that the University of Bologna has been able to get a lot of uh, funds from the Horizon Europe uh, program, sorry, from the Horizon 2020 program, uh, almost 150 million in competitive program. And uh, only since the beginning of Horizon Europe, uh, that's uh, already uh, about 50 million. In terms of Horizon 2020, this makes uh, um, University of Bologna, uh, the first in terms of, uh, uh, in Italy, in terms of uh, uh, total funds uh, that we got uh, through program and uh, very close to Politecnico di Milan, uh, which is uh, the second one in terms of funds uh, that uh, they received through Horizon 2020 program. And then here we have national programs. I'm not going to go through the details of that and also regional programs. So not of course uh, all this money is related to space, but a substantial amount of money is related to activities which uh, somehow are also relevant to space activities. Now, coming to the last slide, I hope I am on time with my presentation. Here are the three pillars which we envisage for uh, our uh, next steps of collaboration and cooperation with Nereus. Um, the first one is pushing for regional interest through Nereus to engage in political dialogue with uh, relevant European institutions, not only the European Parliament or European Commission, but also uh, European Space Agency. The second one, which I think is relevant to what we're doing today, is networking. So it's very important for us to, uh, to let uh, the other uh, full and associate member know what we are, what we do, and how we can be useful within proposals uh, in the uh, European context. Uh, lastly, let me also say, uh, last but not least, involved in Nereus in communication and public outreach promotion and awareness raising activities. This is very relevant to uh, Horizon Europe proposals. Um, uh, Roya knows that uh, we, we tried in the past uh, to have uh, one uh, joint proposal that unfortunately failed, but our idea is to have uh, Nereus involved as a dissemination partner because this is a, a very nice uh, to have in any space related proposal. So I stop here, uh, Margarita. Let me just put my contact here. And uh, just for knowledge of our audience, I'm also delivering. Uh, within uh, these slides, uh, also a set of backup slides, uh, which uh, uh, remind which are the pillars of research of the University of Bologna. I'm just uh, flipping through the slides uh, very quickly, but they will remain uh, once uh, I distribute the slide. I think they will be available to any uh, um, uh, to the audience uh, for today. So that's all for today, and uh, thanks a lot again for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Paolo, uh, for your great presentation. Um, I, I, I knew already the, the rich activities of the University of Bologna uh, in the space sector, but uh, now and uh, uh, we, we also with your, um, um, uh, with your description about the laboratory, uh, we are totally uh, impressed. <laughs> Um, so congratulations also for the great work you are doing. I have only one question at this moment. Uh, let me show also in the chat if, if there is a question for you. 
Uh, not yet. Okay, but, so, uh, so should I stop sharing? Uh, yes, you, you can okay. stop sharing. So okay. then we can have uh, the next speaker. But I, okay. before we go to the next speaker, I have one question for you. Um, you showed the panorama of activities. You showcased the panorama of activities of the university and you indicated different domains, uh, starting from aerodynamics um, to space exploration, uh, earth observation and so on. My question for you, it's uh, related to the skills. So I would like to ask you if there is any difference between um, space exploration and earth observation regarding required skills for the for the students okay margarita this is a very great question uh, really we have been uh, we have been considering this in the past uh, and uh, the evolving uh, um, job market which requires also making sure that we train our students to be exactly ready uh, for the job market <clears throat> makes us absolutely aware that uh, there is a very large demand in particular now in the field of uh, downstream activities uh, that's uh, related to the multiplication of the available uh, space-based uh, data uh, earth observation techniques and application then in my view um, also because this is related to you know planetary protection climate change etc uh, seems to be an obvious choice in terms of strengthening the capabilities uh, of uh, earth observation uh, data analysis uh, and the design formation this is something for which in our university at the moment we don't have a specific course this is done embedded in other courses and we are seriously considering having a specific either curriculum within uh, the space master or a specific master for earth observation activities. I think this is crucial and that's what makes uh, a little bit different uh, the uh, activities related to you know, space exploration to what has to do with uh, um, earth observation. I hope I answered your question. Uh, great, yes, 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 uh, great. Uh, this is a great feedback for us uh, as well. Um, now, uh, please stay with us, Paolo, because we, we will involve you in the discussion uh, uh, in the next uh, minutes. Um, now, you mentioned a lot of uh, uh, this webinar it has an international scope compared to the previous one. And this is also because of your presentation. You mentioned before that uh, the University of Bologna attracts uh, students uh, internationally. Uh, so now uh, this is uh, where I can make the connection with the next speaker, uh, Dr. Benjamin Bonsu. Um, Dr. Benjamin Bonsu, we, we had the, the, the chance, uh, the opportunity to have an interview a few years ago when I was a journalist for the European Business Review magazine. And just to explain to the audience, uh, Dr. Bonsu is the reason why Ghana launched its first satellite. Uh, I will make a very brief introduction uh, for you, and then I will uh, I will give you the floor to to present uh, the activities of, of the universities there and what you are doing at the moment. Uh, you are a, you are a Ghana-born satellite uh, engineer, currently based in Tokyo. So good afternoon to Tokyo. Now I think it's uh, it's good. <laughs> it's evening. Uh, you are working on nano satellite development, uh, and uh, you built the first uh, Ghanaian uh, satellite, uh, which was uh, deployed uh, in 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong in any kind of information. This was a result of a collaboration between all nations university, uh, and. Um, Moreover, uh, you played a tremendous role in the development of educational framework for space for the universities in Ghana. Uh, so, at the moment, you are working uh, for the in in Tokyo in Japan uh, as a space engineer. Um, I will uh, invite you to to present uh, your activities, and um, with great interest, then I would like to involve you in the discussion with the with the other speakers. The floor is yours. We cannot hear you, Benjamin. Maybe you are muted. 
we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Maybe try to unmute yourself. Or to connect. Yes, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Can you try to speak? No. Disconnect and connect again. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, now yes, yes, now yes. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. It's okay. It's it's the connection. You are connected from uh, from Tokyo, so you can <laughs> share your presentation, please, and start. Right. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Margarita, for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, greetings from um, Japan, Tokyo. Um, my name is Bonsu Benjamin, as uh, she has already uh, introduced. So to today, I would like to talk more about all nations university space activities and how we can um, collaborate with the European um, universities. So um, I, I will uh, go straight to space activities. Uh, for more information about our university, I will send a link later on for you to uh, get to know our programs. Yeah, so I will divert my presentation more focus on satellite and um, its uh, utilization for Ghana activities. So in 2012, I co-founded the Space System Technology Laboratory. Uh, it was under the auspices of the Electronic Engineering Department at All Nations University in Ghana. And um, at that time, I was um, in my final year, very ambitious to able to uh, build Ghana first satellite. And our mission was basically to promote uh, human capacity and also about space science and satellite uh, technology. So the founder of the university um, saw the passion that we had um, at that time, we're a team of um, six students and um, one um, a professional who came to Japan um, and had a cancer leadership training program. So thanks to the founder and the president of All Nation, who made everything possible with our limited resources, as you can see, we were able to put them together to at least uh, build space-related projects before the bigger uh, Ghana sets. So this is all about the Space System Technology Laboratory. You can check our link for more information. About our activities, so we started um, with a concert project and 2012 to 2013, we launched it. And as the saying goes, that bad news travel faster, this time it was reversed. This good news travel faster, and all of a sudden, BBC, the Voice of Africa, and many of the um, major uh, media outlets got to know what Ghana is doing through all nations university. So they actually promoted this uh, project, and all of a sudden, we got a lot of invitation from United Nations and also the Japan JAXA and the University of Tokyo. And um, from there, we got opportunity to get a lot of information on how to build an amateur ground station. And we did everything by ourselves. And uh, we were the first to communicate uh, with the International Space Station in Ghana. And also, we helped with all the various uh, ground station networks that are operating in the VHF, UHF frequency is so any of these CubeSat passes over our region, we were able to actually provide the telemetry data to them to know the status of their satellites within that region. And um, NASA also collaborated with us. Um, they set up this their aerosol um, ground network where they collect um, aerosol content within the atmosphere. So because of all this, um, we started uh, our capacity development strategy, you know, providing workshops uh, that we, we invite all the various um, professionals to able to talk about space and also uh, stimulating the student interest 
in um, satellite technology through the STEM education or the science technology um, and engineering mathematics they are taught in the uh, high schools, the universities, and other enthusiast um, institutions. And we also celebrate the World Space um, Week um, that is organized every year where we connect all the universities together and also share knowledge and also have a series of competition and like basically it's a, a way of um, building uh, capacity. We also have our annual conferences and also we try to bring other African um, um, universities together to come out with some project called the AFCONSAT where we share knowledge on how to build ground stations how to able to um, build capacity in the concert and also the CubeSat. So these are some of the activities I've shown. And um, like I said, women's space um, uh, development is one uh, of our goals where we give opportunity to the, uh, the women, the girls, the ambitious ones that want to take engineering as their profession. And we give them all these opportunities to able to learn about the space um, related projects and also build their capacity to also join universities and also have a strong network where they can be confident in themselves to able to do all these electronic projects um, in their house or, or even in their laboratories at school. So about how Ghana and Japan had this very strong network, it's all about the Ghana SAT. So I did my master's uh, here in Japan, and I was, like I said, very ambitious, always trying to um, do something about uh, the satellite to own our own satellite. So I talked to um, Professor Nakasuka, who, as you can see on the uh, left, and he gave me that kind of guideline that um, United Nations had the post nano satellite program where I can able to go to the Kyushu Institute of Technology to join some nano satellite projects and also use that means to also fulfill my ambitious dream. So I called the president of the university, talked to him about all these activities and this, and he also said, okay, I will fund this project by myself. I, because, you know, involving the government takes a lot of time. So he funded the whole Ghana Sat project. And um, yeah, here we are, we launched the first Ghana satellite. We, through that, we form another a strong network called the BIRDS Project, which uh, through the Ghana Initiative, we were able to bring other countries who also are also ambitious like the way we are, like Bangladesh at that time, Mongolia at that time. So we, uh, we combined this network together and we, through that, we were able to get a, a, a launch opportunity from JAXA and we launched a constellation of CubeSat that we were able to use in monitoring our activities in various countries. So the successful launch of GANASAT has opened a lot of opportunities for more than 10 universities in Africa to build their capacity in CubeSat design and development. So yes, as Margarita said, why am I still in Japan and um, still pursuing uh, space activities basically is just to understand the space industry in japan because japan gave that opportunity and getting another opportunity to learn the micro satellite technology and also the bigger satellites and also to understand the japan space policy and how we can able to establish the ghana space agency is what is my uh, is my ultimate goal and the reason why i'm still in japan um, pushing harder to understand the various technologies and also the manage, managerial um, activities that goes on to able to have a sustainable space program in your country. So I joined ISO Space in um, November 2020 as a communication subsystem engineer. And since I joined, I've been part of the, the first private um, constellation of micro satellites called the Groose Constellation Satellite, which was um, purposely to observe is an Earth observation satellite with a mission to, you know, check the coastal regions of Japan because, as you know, they have a lot of um, um, challenges with North Korea and other countries within their coastal regions. So we are purposely focused on building Earth observation satellites, and uh, these are some of the history of the company. 
So yes, um, for possible areas for collaboration with um, All Nations University, I've listed some few points. I think All Nations University, with our limited resources, and for the European universities, looking at the first presenter, the the number of um, good opportunities he shared, I strongly believe that if there are some ground station networks in, in Europe, universities, we are ready to collaborate so that um, whatever keeps that, that is there, we can help in also tracking them and also monitoring the health status and sending those information back to the various uh, university that already have satellites in orbit. And, and also the aerospace engineer here, the presenter uh, talked about this. We all want to start our aerospace program. So um, at the bachelor and master degree level, so I strongly believe that um, with NEROS um, uh, playing a major role, we can be able to collaborate in the future. And about Space Museum, yes, I strongly believe with our Space Outreach Program strategy, when we have a, um, a state of the art space museum in Ghana, this will also create a lot of interest for people to also understand all the, the history about the European satellite and also the other countries that, or let me say the major space actors um, satellite. So these are some of the things um, I'm looking forward to. If there is any funding opportunity, we can share together and also try to implement them. And this is also one of our biggest um, um, goal where we want to um, bridge the gap when it comes to satellite environment um, um, equipment. Africa, we lack this kind of um, um, space infrastructure. So most of the times we have to, you know, you know, take our satellite to other uh, major space actors to build them or test our satellites ready for launch. So these are some of the things I'm looking at. So if there are any kind of way we can collaborate, I think that would be good. And also about this proposal, um, this um, link is very uh, important for all the European universities, I think, because um, we have been able to um, go through the various series of the BERS project. And now we have come out with an open source uh, where you can be able to use these kind of bus systems to build your own satellite, even in your garage. So if you check this document, it has all the various steps, procedure that you can be able to uh, build this best uh, project um, bus system. So I strongly believe in the future, if there is any funding somewhere, we can collaborate to build a lot of um, CubeSat constellations where um, between Europe and Ghana and other, also other birds members to able to uh, use this to monitor the climate change impact in the form of wildlife or melting ice or shift in the seasons, um, agriculture and so on and so forth. Because uh, as you all know, the CubeSat technology is actually growing and these missions can be able to at least use these kind of uh, uh, activities for each each. Uh, Benjamin, we need to close uh, in uh, very shortly. <laughs> I cannot hear you. We cannot hear you again. So Okay, I think I think we can we can uh, move on. You can um, uh, try try to connect again so we can hear you. So, we would like to thank very much uh, uh, Benjamin for his uh, presentation. There is some some technical problem, but I, yes, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you very clear now. I'm so sorry. I don't know what is really happening. Uh, by the way, I'm using my, I think my company's laptop. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, Benza, Benza, right. uh, I have one last question to you before we move to the next uh, speaker. Uh, okay. So, uh, there, there have been, you can stop sharing your presentation. You can stop sharing your presentation so the next speaker, speaker can okay. prepare. Um, there have been important developments with regards to uh, to the creation of the African Space Agency. You are aware about it, right? 
Right. Okay. Yes, because my, I my, I was my, part of the whole team that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I will, will tell. You. My question is that: Is there any role of education training there, and what are and what are the opportunities for cooperation at regional level in Africa? Uh, thanks. I think um, if you have read the African um, Space yes. Policy Implementation Plan, yes. you you have seen that you will see that the core focus is more on the earth observation and yes. communication. So currently, um, here in Ghana, we have we have joined many network called the Group on Earth Observation. It's called the uh, Geo. Maybe you've heard about it. And we have the African Regional uh, Data Cube, which um, also it's more focused on the earth observation. Mm -hmm. So we have few institutions in Ghana and also um, other collaborating uh, West African countries where we you know, analyze this earth observation data. So yes, of course, um, we have um, a very strong um, let me say institution that are uh, on the focus on the user side of how to able to use these earth observation um, products to able to analyze and provide decision process for uh, our government and also policymakers. And is, the, is there any opportunity for cooperation at regional level? Yes, yes. I, I, I strongly believe that um, there are other um, regions that, that really want to also, you know, extend their mm -hmm. networks aside what is already known. So I think okay. with um, your network, we can able to do that. Thank you very much, uh, Benjamin. Stay with us. Thank you. Stay, stay with us right. for the last part of the discussion, um, because I will come back to you, to to you and uh, 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 Paolo, for the last uh, uh, part of the questions. Now I would like to welcome Miss um, uh, Milva Carbonaro. She is the coordinator of, um, of the EU training initiative EO4GEO, now it's the Alliance. Um, Milva will explain how universities can benefit uh, from, this, uh, from this Alliance and what are the goals. Uh, Milva, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Margarita, for uh, the invitation and for the introduction. I'm uh, going to share quickly my screen, but I have to uh, okay, so uh, please, can you confirm that you can uh, see well the presentation? Yes. Okay, very good. So thank you very much. I'm uh, Milva Carbonaro from GSIG Association, which has been the coordinator of the EO4GEO project, uh, as introdu introduced by Margarita, and is now, let's say, the operational body, the manager of the EO4GEO Alliance. Very briefly, I, um, to, I'm giving you a, a, a glance overview of what have been the products and services developed within the EO4GEO projects, and uh, uh, which are now um, let's say, uh, taken by the EU4G Alliance as a, a legacy from the previous project to further build on them a solution for skills development in the space downstream sector. As you can see, we have developed uh, a new 4 g body of knowledge, which was, uh, which is uh, actually uh, our, um, let's say, shared vocabulary to uh, have a common understanding of the different concepts uh, related to knowledge in the space geoinformation sector and the related skills that, uh, let's say, uh, are connected to those specific concepts and knowledge. Around this common vocabulary, uh, a set of tools have been developed, uh, which use, uh, um, let's say, the vocabulary to, for instance, design uh, curricula or describe an occupational profile or even a job offer. Or um, through the, uh, the annotation tool, it is possible to annotate different uh, so, uh, resources so that they can uh, be compared through the box matching tool. And uh, in this way, for instance, uh, a, a person looking for a job can compare uh, his or curriculum, uh, curriculum vitae with uh, uh, a job offer and understand uh, which are the competencies, the skills that he or she miss in order to be, uh, to apply for that job. And upon this, uh, to build 
his her own uh, training path towards that goal. Uh, then, of course, we tested the, the um, let's say, the methodology we applied in U4GEO in different training actions and developed also training materials uh, um, to be also, uh, let's say, used in those training actions, focused on the three main subsectors addressed by U4GEO, which were smart cities, integrated applications, and climate change. All these materials and recordings and results of the training actions are available in the U4GEO training framework and uh, and it's important to see uh, to say and it is valid uh, both for the training material and uh, actions and for uh, let's say the BOC related tools and the BOC itself that all the products developed within your 4 geo are fully open so anybody uh, can uh, have access to them and uh, use for instance APIs to de uh, develop uh, other applications or um, um, built on the training material available to customize training material for his or own uh, students and so on. So this is uh, the, the big paradigm of your 4GO results, uh, the openness of all the results. Then as you can see, we have also other results um, which are uh, provided by the mobility program, which has been developed within your 4GO and from the website, you can see the available offers still right now, communication tools and the for your work watch uh, intended as a uh, let's say an observatory uh, of uh, skills intelligence so what are um, the identification of skills gap uh, in the uh, specific fields of space downstream sector um, of course all these uh, products have a different reached a different level of maturity along the course of the project but as i was saying they are not uh, uh, let's say uh, intended to stay as they are but they are intended to evolve and to be further used deployed and extended to new functionality and new areas as well so what are uh, through uh, within your for Geo, we less, uh, we learned some lessons. So, so I'm uh, underlining him here the main two. Uh, the first lessons learned is that skills development is a collaborative and uh, collective endeavor. Um, um, I will. Uh, um, show you uh, in, a, in a minute uh, which are the main strategic objectives of, uh, of the alliance of the sector skill strategy which has been uh, let's say um, pursued by the alliance and uh, um, what uh, we um, all understand is that the, the objectives are so ambitious and uh, so ambitious and so wide that they can't be uh, reached by a single organization nor by a single consortium or a single project. It should be really a collective effort effort um, putting together and coordinating all the different uh, um, key actions and the stakeholders so uh, we need to think uh, about uh, from the perspective of the all ecosystem uh, so the challenges to do so as i was mentioning are translated in the sector skill strategy that was released um, let's say at the end of 2021 as one uh, of the major outcomes of the U4GEO project according to the direction of the funding uh, of the granting authority, so uh, DGAC and DG Employment. So um, in the sectoral skills strategy, we identified five strategic objectives that you can see listed here, the, still, the, the setup of a skills intelligence mechanism, which is uh, intended to set, let's say, a, a, a kind of permanent observatory on skills needs, which is, uh, should be also able to address uh, um, future uh, let's say trends uh, uh, in uh, uh, both from a technological economic and societal point of view then of course the maintenance of the body of knowledge and the related tools but not only a kind of maintenance as it as it is but uh, it we are speaking here about an evolutionary maintenance. So a maintenance which implies the uh, adoption, the development of new tools uh, or um, the further um, uh, development of those existing. Uh, and of course, the interoperability operability with other body of knowledge in uh, let's say complementary fields 
Um, then, uh, uh, of course, uh, there is the part related uh, to improving the educational offers. And so here the ambition is to uh, reach, uh, to, to set up a one-stop shop portal uh, where not only uh, the, um, the, the learner can have access uh, uh, to uh, the different uh, uh, educational and training resources, but also have a kind of guidance to orientate in this uh, within uh, the plethora of resources and uh, um, let's say build his or her own uh, learning path. And of course, very important is the point related to the certification of achieved knowledge and skills. Uh, very important is uh, to enforce the understanding of the peculiarity of the space downstream sector as a sector able to support all the other vector sectors in the different uh, industrial ecosystems. And uh, of course, uh, um, we should be open also to citizen engagement through um, also the tools of citizen science and apply new learning methods and uh, really raise awareness uh, among the wider public uh, about the uh, potentiality of economic growth provided by the space downstream sectors and this should be let's say uh, communicated also since early stage so also actions uh, already from private uh, primary schools not only addressed to uh, pupils but also to teachers and parents are part of our strategy um, so we need uh, the collaboration of all partners associated partners of your 4GO and of course this is open for all new partners and so this is the evolution um, which brought from the EO4GO project as such to the constitution of the alliance which is taking over the legacy of the EO4GO project and it's open as I was uh, mentioning to all key stakeholders in the sectors. Um, as I was mentioning the key word is uh, co the coordinated approach so um, um, we want to avoid that uh, uh, scattered projects or initiatives are uh, still uh, uh, continues to be, uh, let's say, promoted by different stakeholders, but we really want to uh, be a kind of collector of information in that sense also of all the ongoing and future initiatives so that the approach is coordinated and there are not duplication of efforts or, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, competing uh, and overlapping initiatives, but really all initiatives should be complementary in, in a coherent framework as provided by the set of skill strategies and through the actions which are detailed in the long-term action plan of your 4GO, where uh, the actions are, let's say, really detailed and described for all uh, different um, strategic objectives and I invite you all to uh, connect to this uh, link that you can see here and you will be you will have available after the, the webinar um, within the, the slides so that to download these important documents. So, um, the Alliance implements these strategic objectives also to in, in order to constitute the basis for the, uh, the setup of a large scale partnership supporting the pet for skills. Just a few words about the pet for skills for those who, who, who don't know it. It is an, um, an, a very important initiative uh, started by the Commission in DG Employment in late uh, 2021. Uh, uh, um, sorry, 2020 in November. And uh, um, in this, uh, um, in this uh, initiative, uh, the Commission wants to support activities to really uh, um, um, foster skills development within the 14 uh, industrial ecosystems described in the EU um, industry strategy. And uh, among these 14 ecosystems, aerospace and defense is one of them. Um, so, uh, in principle, a large scale partnership, so supported by DG employment and the relevant uh, DG uh, of the European commissions are um, being, uh, um, let's say, uh, constituted and already in the aerospace and defense where, let's say, the space downstream sector in terms of services is uh, represented, they, uh, we have there already since the very beginning 
um, a large scale partnership, which is more focusing, focused on the upstream part of the sectors. Uh, but uh, we are now reaching, the, let's say, the, the, the stage where we are really uh, coming into concrete uh, discussions with the relevant DGs to set up an own large-scale partnership, so recognized by the Commission for the space downstream uh, sector. And, uh, um, of course, this should be complementary to the existing one and uh, um, be of service and connected to the other vertical sectors. And uh, our big expectation from this large scale partnership is to raise awareness on this space uh, segment of the space economy uh, that uh, is uh, more and more recognized to have a strong uh, growth potential, but uh, let's say in terms of available funding and uh, even awareness uh, um, among the wider public has not the same, uh, um, let's say, uh, coverage as the upstream segment uh, so far. So we wanted really to push this, uh, to raise awareness about this part. Uh, this segment uh, uh, of the um, space economy that we are representing. The O4G Alliance kicked off on the 22nd of November. There will be the first meeting of the com uh, steering committee, which has been appointed on that occasion next week, uh, on Tuesday, 13th December. Already 23 members from 13 EU countries signed the network agreement, which uh, uh, governed the alliance, and the other 17 members are negotiating to join. And uh, uh, the composition is by higher education in institutions, companies, sectoral associations, and also public institutions. The activities uh, for the next month uh, are deeply focused on uh, the member support to promote new projects uh, under the current calls, in particular Erasmus Plus and Horizon Europe, but of course not only. And uh, uh, as I was mentioning, the strategic lines for the short medium term also rely on the setup of the large scale partnership for, for space downstream. So including not only earth observation and geoinformation, but also, for instance, navigation system, secure communication and so on. Uh, and uh, f um, as I was uh, mentioning, a dedicated meeting was held with the Pet for Skills Support Office and the DG. Yeah, we went for a few seconds more because we. Yes, need to I'm, I'm concluding. Okay. And the follow up meeting is already uh, scheduled for late January uh, to uh, really uh, take the concrete steps. And the Alliance is open to all stakeholders to join and uh, to reach a critical mass to reach this objective. And don't miss this opportunity. So here I'm not going through the the, 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 the advantages to join the alliance, but you can see uh, are those that I mentioned before, and you can read this uh, fully while, uh, um, let's say, checking the, uh, the slides later on. So I leave you just with uh, um, uh, the, the, the information on how to reach us and uh, uh, the, um, the screenshot of the web page, which has been reshaped for the Alliance. So um, you are all welcome to join. A lot of activities are going to be put in place, a lot of opportunities. So um, we are available for your re request and to support you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Milva, for your great presentation. I would like to pose a question for you. We have questions also from the audience. Uh, but before that, I would like to ask from Paolo and Benjamin to open their cameras and join the discussion because these questions also refer to them. Firstly, I would like to address the question to Milva. Uh, we heard today that the University of Bologna attracts a lot of international stu students. We heard from Benjamin that Ghana seeks a Euro European cooperation uh, uh, for its universities. Uh, how, how the alliance, um, how international education players can be involved in the alliance? And are there any benefits for them if they can? Yes, of course. Uh, in fact, uh, the alliance, uh, the openness of the alliance is, is also towards internationalization. So uh, we want, uh, uh, let's say, to go outside Europe and also to collaborate with other countries. Uh, so, in fact, uh, uh, Dr. Bonus, uh, Bonsu, I was uh, taking note of your contacts because uh, <laughs> I would like to, uh, to get further in contact with you, to, uh, also to reach this, this objective. 
perspective and uh, um, we are really um, let's say exploring all the possibilities also for the connection with other countries because uh, we know that no money no party in a way so uh, um, we are exploring this possibility and I think in the current calls there are even funds available for uh, um, let's say institution outside you so feel free to contact us in this respect. thank you thank you Milka and the same refers to the University of Bologna as well uh, and uh, in this uh, in this respect I would like to ask both Paolo and Benjamin how do you value such how do you value such initiatives uh, like like the one of EO for Geo do you have a similar experience in the past so uh, maybe Paolo can uh, first take the floor Yes, very quickly, uh, Margarita. I know we are late, so I'll try to squeeze my answer in a few seconds. We started uh, I... also later. We had some technical problems, so it's 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 okay. okay. Take your time. <laughs> no, I'll try to be brief, also to to leave space to the others. I think uh, the eo 4 gu is very valuable. Uh, Milva knows that we already had the chance for collaboration in the context of another call. Unfortunately, we we didn't succeed in the other call we collaborated on. But I think uh, these kind of alliances, in particular related to the downstream, uh, are really important. So from our side, the University of Bologna is absolutely open uh, to these kind of initiatives. So that's uh, uh, the short answer. Of course, uh, the, a long answer would need uh, much more time. But yeah, uh, as usual. <laughs> in then in we brief, can uh, I think that's very important. We can continue bilaterally. Uh, I have one question for you. Ah, sorry, ben Benjamin. Uh, before I jump to the next question. So, um, I think uh, what Mivia San said, that, yeah, for, for in Ghana, we have uh, the group on Earth uh, observation that, like I rightly said, and this uh, November, they, we, we were lucky to host the, 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 the international um, event where the vice president was even pres uh, present to share some of the needs that Ghana wants. We have other institutions from university base. We have some universities in different regions that are also part of this alliance. So yes, like I said, we want to actually extend the network. So any form of um, new implementation are welcome. Thank you very much. Now we have three questions before we close the meeting. So I will tell to you the questions and then whoever is interested can reply. First question. Uh, it comes from Anna Christina Setikeli from MANT. Um, I she says, I find citizen science especially interesting. What fields of the space sector do you think is worth to cover? Well, uh, as I was mentioning, we uh, we are focusing on the downstream part of the space sector. So, for sure, we will continue to cover Earth observation and geoinformation as connected. But as I was mentioning, we also want to, to cover other parts of the downstream, uh, like, for instance, the Galileo, like navigation systems. And uh, um, you know that uh, following uh, the well-known political and uh, political situation and the war, to, to make it shorter, um, the, the, um, the European Commission really stressed the need for uh, the, for the uh, for the EU to be to have uh, uh, an autonomy. Uh, a strategic autonomy towards the rest of the world because uh, maybe we are at the cutting edge of technology but we need a component from Russia, from China and yes. whatever. And to do so, the, the, the development of skills is of paramount importance and uh, also uh, there, are, there are upcoming uh, communications and strategy re re related to security and defense and to deploy all the strategy of the Commission skills are needed and in fact next year will be the year of skills exactly 2023 2023 as, as announced by von der Leyen. exactly uh, next question from veselin vasiliev are there any planned initiatives related to vocational space education and training in the upstream sector well, um, not directly, although we understand that there is a sign, a kind of, uh, um, let's say, uh, overlapping in the sense that in the development that are ongoing, uh, let's say, for instance, data elaboration will be maybe embedded in the, in the satellites already, so will be in a way also 
partially in the upstream. So um, let's say uh, the EU4G alliance is not uh, devoted as such to the upstream sector, but recognize the need to work closely with the upstream sector. Also because of this evolution. So the, the two words should not, shouldn't be separated, they should be, jo should yeah, be joined. Right. Yeah. One last question, and then uh, we can conclude. Uh, one last, last question to pa address to Paolo and to, to Benjamin. Uh, given your experience, in which area of space studies do you see more demand from students? Maybe Paolo can... Uh... Yes, uh, uh, very quickly, once again, I think uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this moment uh, where the, the space sector, in particular, the uh, number of activities, uh, launches and uh, uh, missions uh, which is being conceived uh, is really exploding. Uh, mm -hmm. The new space economy is creating uh, such a large number of, uh, uh, you know, initiatives allegedly related to lunar exploration, Mars exploration, commercial exploitation of different bodies, uh, uh, asteroid mining, etc. Uh, there is a real shortage, at least that's my feeling, of uh, uh, people uh, dealing with, uh, with space hardware. I mean, our own students are hired even before finishing their master's degree. So that means that we are really short in personnel also for going ahead in PhD and uh, postdoc studies. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, I would uh, surely agree that there is a shortage also in other sectors, but from my perspective, that's what's really missing at this time, because the industry is really absorbing a lot of people uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a really short time. So basically, uh, either they don't find people enough and they try to uh, take people from other companies and we don't have people to add with our research activities in the university. That's my feeling, at least. Thank you, Paolo. Great. And Benjamin, what is your view? What are your um, views? Yeah, I'm, I am an engineer, so I'm looking, I'll talk Japan a little and also Ghana, our university, what we are focused on. Yeah, so currently Japan is focusing on trying to you know, use very sophisticated tools and uh, like the synthetic aperture radar implementation of micro satellites, not the conventional satellites. Mm -hmm. And this research has brought a lot of new technology for Japan and we have one company called Sinspective that is able to, you know, demonstrate that we can able to use uh, micro satellite technology to you know, use this kind of synthetic aperture radar so that w that challenge about earth observation in, in the optical region can be solved and you can able to monitor data day and night without any kind of um, obstruction. And again, they are also looking at communication. Yeah, because yes. of the 5G, the implementation of, so our company is part with collaboration with NEC uh, that we are working on building um, a very um, sophisticated uh, transmitter with a high frequency that can able to do that. When it comes to Ghana, our space strategic plan is also focused on earth observation. But what our university really want to do is to be the forefront when it comes to satellite development and manufacturing. Because from the user side, of course, there, there is a lot of data, Sentinel or Landsat, that people can able to use all these kind of tools to able, able to access them. But we need those engineers, we need a very sustainable engineers who are very confident in themselves to able to understand the system development phases and also practically know how to build satellites that have those missions to able to also, you know, replace all the various uh, systems that will always uh, will have a mission lifespan to help human, human in general. So for our, all nations university, we really want to build a strong engineering team that can able to develop the satellite. And also at the same time, from the user segment, we also want to you know, collaborate with the European, the Copernicus programs and all the various EO, GEO programs to also have all these um, um, data analysts also on the side. So that's, that's my view. Thank you very much for your uh, insightful feedback in this question, uh, Benjamin. 
Um, and of course, it's not only Earth observation, but also uh, ocean observation. We have the question from uh, um, Katnik. She asks how oceans can be explored better by using space technologies. So whoever would like to take uh, quickly this question. To me, I think space can space technologies can do contribute to a lot of if we are to use this. Yes. Okay. So if uh, uh, if you don't have any other comments um, to the questions, uh, then I think we can close the webinar. I would like to thank very much uh, the speakers for their great presentations. Um, the participants who joined and stayed with us till the end. Uh, we will resume next year for our fourth uh, session on, uh, in, on uh, universities, education and training. Um, we will announce the date very soon for, for the next uh, webinar and uh, we will send you the, the invitation. Thank you very much to, to everyone and uh, hope you have a great uh, holidays. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much. And thank you for the Good opportunity. Night. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye. bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Goodbye to everyone. Or, wait, I, I stopped recording. No, I didn't leave. He, he asked me. Wait. Cancel. Um, but it's already stopped somehow. I can't. Ah, here, stop. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, now I can stop. Okay.